We're go now we're going to look at some of the more advanced features of the circle track analyzer. For example, uh, if you calculate lap times, you can click on Analyze Suspension up here. And the program will show you actually what the car is doing as it's going around the track. Here it shows you where it is on the track. And we can go continuous on this in sort of an animated approach. Now it's pausing every so often because we're recording the screen for this demo. But here it's showing you if we go uh, single step, we can actually show uh, what's going on here one step at a, at a time going around the track. I'm going to bump this up a little bit. Because what's going on in the turns is more interesting here. And you can see we're going into a turn here, almost at the apex. And here you get some idea how much dive we're going through. Uh, it's got um, negative 44 degrees of roll, 0.44 degrees of roll, but 2.6 degrees of dive. So this will give you some idea where your roll center is moving to, how much dive and roll your front suspension is going through. I know that's a question many people ask. And you can see now your roll center started here with a gray dot is now over here right on the on the ground. I'm not going to tell you if that's good or bad, but that is what the program is indicating is going on. And here it shows you what your springs are doing, how uh, this line here, black line, shows you the uh, base condition. And the red shows you how as much has changed from the base condition. And here we got how much are you on the gas or are you on the brake? Here we're showing you your 98% on the brake, your engine RPM. And let's uh, back this up a little bit from where uh, before we get into the turn. You can see we're just going into the turn now. And now we don't have nearly as much weight on the front as we did have because now we're not braking yet. But as soon as we start braking, we're going to single step this ahead. See, we get on the brakes, see all the weight goes forward on the uh, on the front wheels, comes off the back wheels. Now you say, why is this adding up more? The length of these lines is adding more than what the length would be at all these black lines. That's because there's banking. You know, the banking is shown right here, how much banking we got on this thing. And uh, that's what's producing more weight on the front end. So anyway, I'm just showing you some things you can do here. Uh, get out of this screen. It's going to say, do you want to save it as a baseline, which is a handy thing to do. Let's say yes, just for instance. And what it wants a, a baseline name, so let's give it um, give it base roll bar. Not sure what we're going to do with it, but let's just say we're going to change the roll bar or something. We back out of this screen. Go to the front suspension which is basically our roll center calculator with a few more features in it. What we have here is a roll bar, for example, some roll bar inputs. But other than that, it's pretty much like they're a roll center calculator. You can draw the front screen big if you want. Here you can go through dive and roll. And let's, uh, I can actually type in here, let's go minus 0.4, which, uh, oh, that's dive. 2.6, which you saw on that other screen of dive and uh, minus 0.44 roll and that's what we saw on that other screen and here you can see it again the roll center started here and moved to here if we you'll see if we change this stuff how uh, we can just watch the roll center move back to where it's going now here we see a situation where the roll center is moving around a lot which is generally not a good situation you've seen it go you know, it's going down, but it's going off the screen left or right. It's generally not a good situation. Um, you generally want the roll center to stay pretty much in the same position as you go through dive and roll. That's generally a car that's much easier to drive, much more predictable. We'll go back to drawing at normal. I clicked on big to draw it before. But anyway, um, that's some of the things you can do here. But let's make a big change here. Let's change this from a 250-pound bar up to a 1,000-pound bar back out of this screen calculate lap times analyze suspension and here we can see the pink is what it was before and the uh and so you can see there's some difference here in what the spring is doing um now the spring is only compressed like 0.92 inches here before it's compressed 
or elongated, I'm sorry, 1.12. No, compressed, I'm sorry, compressed, 1.12 inches before. Now it's 0.92. The, the baseline, the original condition, is in the pink here. and shows you the weight, the pounds on the four corners of the car and such. So anyway, I'm just giving you an indication of what it can do. Um, we're still going through about the same amount of dive at this particular condition here, which is, I believe, right here at the beginning, at the apex of the turn. But you can compare things by making changes to the car and such. And we're not going to say this is a baseline. But what else can you do in the... We can find the best gear ratio. Now, finding the best gear ratio, this is another feature, is real critical that you have the, uh, the power curve of the engine fairly accurate. And that means not only uh, do you have it accurate up to peak horsepower, you've got to have it accurate after peak horsepower because how fast the power drops off after horsepower peak is critical to knowing the best gear ratio. A lot of dyno runs will stop very soon after the horsepower peak. And there's a very big difference between an engine that peaks at 7,000. Uh, what does this one peak at? It looks like the horsepower peak. Now, this is a restricted motor. It's peaking at 6,300. But at 6,900, we haven't lost much power. At 7,500, full 1,200 RPM higher, we're only down about 20 horse. And that's a very different situation than something that peaks at, let's say, 6,300. And then by the time it gets to 7,500, it, it may never get there because it runs into a valve toss or something at 6,900 or something. So knowing the shape of the power curve is pretty critical for this. But if you do know the shape of your power curve pretty accurately, we can say, okay, let's find the best gear ratio for this particular trap. And it's going to do, it's going to look at a lot of different gear ratios. It's giving us some information there. What we're doing are trying, um, yeah, okay. It says the founder's fastest lifetime is now 12.94 with a gear ratio of 6.4. The original is 6.1. Do you want to keep it? Mm -hmm. We'll say yes. It tells us the acceleration is now set to 6.4. So that's kind of a handy feature. I didn't pay attention to what the lap times were before, but let's calculate the lap times with the new one. And you see we've gained, uh, we've only gained 200, but it's still, it's went in the right direction. 12.96 and now we're 12.94. So that's a nice feature. It's real handy, let's say, uh, if you're set up, this happens to be a quarter-mile track. And let's say you're going to go to a different track, a track you've never been at before. Let's say you're going to some half-mile track with low banking. Okay. Now let's say, we'll find the best gear ratio for this situation. And it's going to, again, try a bunch of uh, gear ratios, run it around the track. And it said, okay, it went from a 6.4 down to a 5.2. Do you want to keep that? Let's say no. Let's pay attention to 5.2, but let's say no. We don't want to keep that. Let's try this half-mile track. And now, let's go back and put in the 5.2 gear ratio. Going from 6.4 to 5.2, which it said was much better. And how much better is it? Hey, we gained 4,400. That's pretty significant. So if you went to this track with your original gear ratio, you would have uh, been at a real disadvantage. So that's one other feature you can do in the program. Another thing that people want to do is um, people want uh, programs basically to tell them what should they do. Like, how should I set up my car? What kind of stagger should I run? What uh, where do you want my roll centers, my spring rates and stuff? And... Um, Here's something you can do in the program. You can create reports. Mm -hmm. You can create some vehicle calculation reports. And if you know what you're looking for, these are very handy. It gives a lot of this calculated input that you've probably seen in, coming out from other programs like, um, you know, your spring rates, uh, your, your natural frequencies are given uh, down here. Uh, natural frequencies for the front is given here. Roll bar motion ratio, uh, the motion ratio square of the front tires. Uh, here's your spring rate, but down at the tire, you only got a wheel rate of 207 from a 350 pound spring. That's because of the motion ratio squares. So that's one kind of report you can do. Down here at the bottom are some comments. 
about front lateral load distribution, and this is really what's critical for uh, handling. Your front lateral load distribution, we abbreviate FFL, FLLD, of 46.1% is somewhat lower than typically used. A suggested starting point for this would be about 55.2%. And this is based on adding 5% to the vehicle's front weight distribution of 50.2%. So we got about 50-50% front to rear weight distribution. You should add about 5% to that. And that is the approximate percent front lateral load distribution you should shoot for. Now, depending on how you want the car to handle, you may want that a little higher or lower. But you're going to see that term popping up a lot in the program. Here's a general rating for what how the car is set up right now that there's going to be some oversteer let's back out of this one let's see what other kind of reports we can do but you got to calculate performance for some of these others in the analyze mm -hmm. suspension screen which we were already in once um click on reports and then rule of thumb suggestions. This is a real handy little report giving you some idea of what you may want to do with your car as a good starting point. And here it goes into things like, um, let's see, try a 450 pound spring on the right front and a 395 pound spring on the left front, uh, different rear springs, um, 69 pound per inch front roll bar, which isn't much, but that's what it's saying would be a reasonable suggestion or being that low, maybe no front roll bar would be needed. Other things here is, uh, is giving some suggestions about the roll center, that your roll center looks pretty reasonable. Here we get the front lateral load distribution again, um, scrub radius, stagger here, some suggestions for stagger and such. So there's some starting point suggestions. For you. And obviously they're not perfect, but if you don't know much about your car and want the program to suggest something, that would be one place to start. Another thing, let's get back to this front lateral load distribution here that's talked about. Front lateral load transfer or load distribution. Uh, here it is at 46.1% where it says 55.2 is probably what the car would more would be a more neutral handling condition. And this is based only at the apex, when you're not braking and you're not accelerating, right? With, uh, no power on, you're kind of drifting through the turn. But it gives you something to shoot for. Um, here, if we click on this, let's find something here. Now, we're going to find um, uh, some better handling suggestions here. By This uh, feature lets you adjust springs, sway bar, and roll center position. And... It basically says, what do you want to adjust? And let's just pick something. Now, the thing that almost always gets you some pretty good effects is the rear roll center height. In this case, it's probably our pan hard bar. So let's adjust the rear roll center height. And it's saying for 55.2%. It said that would be a good starting point for neutral handling. So let's say that's what we want to do. And we say, okay, find a rear roll center height that's going to give us this 55.2%. We're already at 46.1 with the current setup. Okay. And it says down here that this change going from 46.1 down to 55.2 tends to make the car tighter than its current setup. But it's already, um, it's already pretty loose. So tightening it up would make it more neutral. So let's see what it finds. And it said... Our current roll center height is 17, and it said if you drop the roll center height down to 13.9 or about 14 inches, you would obtain this 55.2% uh, lateral load distribution at the front, which it says is more neutral. Now, what else could we adjust from that? Um, could you adjust uh, the rear springs to do the same thing? Maybe you'd rather adjust the rear springs to obtain that. What does it say here? It says it couldn't adjust the springs enough to go that far. That, um, anyway, what did it find here? It said you'd have to put in some 2,500-pound uh, springs and 2,000-pound springs, and it still wasn't enough to get you where you wanted. I think what it was saying also that the natural frequency was getting, getting too out of the line here. It, it does check. When you start changing springs, 
It tries to make sure you don't pick springs that are so ridiculous that the natural frequency front or rear, depending on what you're adjusting, is so screwy that it's just way out of whack. What else could you adjust here? Uh, let's say the front roll bar. Could you adjust that enough to get us to 55.2%? It says it could not be found close to 55.2%. Okay. So again, uh, what do we do? 13 point, well, anyway. So anyway, uh, the rear roll center height is one thing that can really adjust things a lot for you. Let's go over here and let's uh, do something here. Let's make this, uh, well, here, let me show you how this is done. We go back into finding. We're going to adjust the rear roll center height. And it says, do you want to keep this? Say yes. And now we go over here. And let's drop the bar down to 1391 on both sides to give us that rear roll center height that's better. And now that we got the car more balanced, now let's see if we can make some minor adjustments by using the springs. Let's say we change the front lateral load distribution we're looking for. We're currently at 55.2. But let's say we want to drop it down to... 50, 54, not a big change. And what do we want to do to adjust that? Well, rear roll center height, we know that works good. We only had to raise it, you know, four tenths of an inch to do that. And like it said here, this adjustment tends to make the car slightly looser. Let's say your driver says, let's make it a little bit looser. And what else could we do there? Rear springs. And you don't have to make a huge change here. Now it is finding springs that make sense. Raising the rear roll bar about four tenths of an inch got us 54%. Or if you change the springs from 180-150 in the rear to 288-240 in the rear, we still got reasonable natural frequencies. That would be about the same effect. What else could we adjust? The front roll center height. Mm -hmm. No, we couldn't find one by adjusting the front roll center height to do that. It just There was not enough adjustment in the front roll center height. How about from the front roll bar? Can we do something with the front roll bar? Yeah, we could. The current front roll bar is 1,000 pounds per inch. If we dropped it to 560 pounds per inch, we can obtain 54%, which is basically the same as raising the rear springs that we've seen, or... Uh, raising the rear roll center height. So anyway, this is a real handy screen for you to make some fine tunings. What it did point out was if you got a big change to make, you're probably going to have to go to a, something like the rear roll center. Rear roll center, which is pan hard bar adjustments, really can make a big effect on this. But if you got minor changes to make, then you can start tweaking it with front roll center, uh, front roll bar, and then the spring raise. But if you got a huge adjustment to make, you're probably going to have to go to the uh, the rear roll center, which is your panhard bar. Or if you're using leaf springs, then, then it's tough because leaf springs don't allow for that much adjustment. So that's another nice feature. What else we got? Another nice feature here is this corner weight. This is real nice for uh, if you want to adjust cross weight. For example, um, based on the current static weight, and the threads per inch, this would be on your jacking screws. If you were had, using different threads, jacking screws, you'd have to change this. But you can go over here and say, I want to change my crossway. <clears throat> and I want to turn on some jacking screws. So let's jack on this one just to show you how it works. Six turns. Six turns on the left front jacking screw has now raised the height. I'm sorry has uh, compressed the spring more on the left front and it's changed the four corner weights. As you notice here, the percent weight on the rear, the percent rate on the left did not change, but we went from 57.4% to 56.2% <coughs> excuse me, cross weight. So this is real handy for, handy for doing that. Or you could go over here and make a tire circumference change Let's say the current tire circumference here is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we've got to tell what tire we're going to change. 
that they were going to change the left front. And it's currently, let's say it's at 82%. Or I'm not, 82, 82 inches. And you're going to go up to 84 inches. It's going to change the cross rate from 57.43 again to 56.3. And you got to... And this pays attention to spring rates and um, and such also because if your spring rates and your motion ratios are different, these effects will be different. And we have this other option here for corner weights is moving some weight around. Let's say we're going to move weight from a current condition and we're going to move the weight the weight to move is we're moving 80 pounds, and we're going to move it now ahead of the axle, and you can see down here where things are. The current location is here, and here's going to be the new location, and we're going to move it 12 inches ahead of the axle. This time we're going to move it to the right 22 inches. And you can see that's how that change would affect, in this case, all four corners because we're actually moving weight. If you don't move weight, you don't change the front. All you do is change cross weight. But if you're actually moving weight around, um, you can change the, the cross, left, and rear percentages. So that is some of the more advanced features in the circle track analyzer.